Hi again, I'm Tim and welcome to episode 2 of the Java Show. I hope you found both parts of episode 1 about Jakarta useful. In this episode I'll be telling you all you need to know about travelling by train in Java. As interesting as I think Jakarta is, at some point you're going to want to be moving on to the other place in Java. And for this you realistically have two options. Using the train or taking an intercity bus. You could also fly I suppose, but then you'd miss out on seeing Java's stunning scenery as you travel across the island. Travelling by bus may seem like a good idea, but there are a couple of downsides to this. Firstly, a lot of the bus terminals are located inconveniently far away from the centres of the cities that they serve. Yes, there are feeder buses to get into the city, or you could take a taxi, but this is both extra costs and extra messing about, and it can be confusing, especially if arriving somewhere in the middle of the night. Which leads me on to the next problem, punctuality. As you head east through Java, the roads become more likely to be single carriageway, and the potential for delay increases, as there are many very slow lorries on the road that you end up getting stuck behind. This also leads to drivers often making some crazy overtaking manoeuvres, which far too frequently results in fatal accidents. Another problem that often occurs in places that are on the tourism radar is being dropped off at the office of a tour company rather than at the bus station. This is particularly common in Probolingo, so if you're heading by bus to Bromo via Probolingo, then make sure that where you're being dropped off definitely looks like a big bus station and not some guy's tourist office. In my opinion, long distance buses should be your last resort for those times when the trains are sold out or to reach those places such as Pangandaran, which are not served by the railway network. Okay, so now I'll tell you about the trains. It was January 2020 when I last took the train in Java, but I'm pretty sure that the information is still up to date. The first thing you need to know about is the railway network. Java is home to almost all of the Indonesian railway network. Yeah, there's a few lines also in Sumatra, but it's very far from being the network that Java has. In fact, there are very few towns or cities of a decent size in Java that are not connected to the rail network. Once you decide on your destination, the next thing you have to consider is which class of train you want to take. There are three main classes of train carriage, but prices depend on the level of comfort. The most basic class of train carriage is economy, but don't be put off by the name. All economy coaches these days are air-conditioned and fairly comfortable. Some of the older economy coaches have a 3 plus 2 seating arrangement, with three bench seats facing another three on one side of the aisle, and then two bench seats facing another two on the other side of the aisle. This allows 106 seats per coach, and is the most crowded of the coaches, especially when full and when luggage ends up being placed in the legroom area and everyone's legs end up all being squashed together. These were definitely not designed with people with long legs in mind. These seats are not reclining. Although this being said, even a really long journey in these coaches isn't too much of a hardship, unless you are travelling long distance at night and hoping to get a bit of sleep. In this case, I perhaps think about getting an upgrade. I've taken a night train from Jogjakarta to Bandung with this type of economy carriage, and I'd be lying if I said I had any degree of decent sleep. Slightly less crowded, with 80 seats per coach, and a similar older economy 2 plus 2 coaches, which have two pairs of bench seats facing each other on either side of the central aisle. Some routes have a more modern style of economy coach. These have pairs of individual seats arranged airline style facing in the same direction. These seats are reclinable, similar to those in executive class, but there is much less leg room. They are definitely better low than the old style economy seats. The second class of carriage is business. Although with the improvements being made to economy class, these seem to be becoming less common. The seating quality is similar to that of the older economy trains, having a 2 plus 2 seating layout with the seats facing the direction of travel, and there is also a bit more leg room. The seats in these coaches are also non-reclining, although with the seats not facing each other, you do get the luxury of being able to stretch your legs out under the seats in front of you. The highest class of carriage is executive. These have pairs of comfy reclining seats with plenty of leg room so you can stretch your legs out under the seats in front of you. There are only 50 seats per coach, which means that there is twice the space compared to the most basic of economy coaches. Obviously, these cost the most, but you can get a reasonable sleep on these if travelling at night. OK, so I may have told a small fib. There are two other new classes of carriage above executive, but these are not very common, only being found on certain trains on certain routes. These two classes are known as Luxury 1 and Luxury 2. Luxury 1 has seats that are similar to the flatbed seats you get in business class on a long haul flight, and is the closest thing you will get to an actual sleeper train in Indonesia. 
The seats recline almost flat, so you can fully lay down and it's very easy to get a decent sleep. And with only 18 seats per coach, there is certainly plenty of room. However, this doesn't come cheap, with a ticket between Surabaya and Jakarta costing roughly two to three times as much as for an executive ticket. Luxury 2 class is more for daytime travel and costs about twice that as a, of executive. These coaches have huge comfy seats that also can recline and you get loads of leg room. You also get food and drinks included in the ticket price. The seats are so big that you can only get three across the width of the coach and only 20 seats six in total in the coach itself. Not many routes have these coaches, Jakarta to Jogjakarta being one of the few. Some trains contain only one class of coach, either economy or executive, whereas other trains contain a mixture of the different classes. It's also very common to see tickets for the same class on the same train having different prices. The seats are totally the same, so just book the cheapest available seat in the class you want. All the train services are named, with the names often having something to do with mountains and legends, or sometimes just nonsense words, incorporating names of the cities served. The best class of executive trains all used to have Argo in the title, but these days all the executive trains are to this standard, although the trains still keep the Argo part of their name. So how to go about booking your tickets? Well, you have a few choices. You can go old school and book at the station. I don't really recommend this method though, as it can be quite time consuming, and much more convenient methods exist. But if you really want to do this, then this is what you need to do. Go to the station and you will find a ticket counter and a board giving you the details of the number of seats remaining on each train for the next week or so. You then fill out a ticket request form giving all the details of the journey plus your name and passport number. Then depending on the station you either go up to one of the ticket counters or you take a numbered slip and wait until your number is called. You will then be given a ticket that contains a booking reference code. This isn't your actual ticket though. You get this at the station just before departure but more about that in a bit. Some stations now low have self-service touchscreen ticket machines. I've never tried one of these, so I don't know if they give instructions in English or not. Another way to buy tickets is to pop into a convenience store like Alpha Mart or Indomaret and either use the terminal if they have one or ask the staff if you can book a train ticket. Again, you'll need to give all your details and you'll be given a shop receipt which contains the booking code which you will need at the station on the day of travel. These shops are absolutely everywhere, so don't worry about not being able to find one. By far the easiest way to book a ticket low is to use an app like Ticket or Travel Locker. I personally prefer Travel Locker as I can get it to accept payments from my Monzo bank card. Sometimes you can find there to be problems with linking your bank card to the app, as it looks like you have paid but the transaction hasn't gone through then you won't have a ticket, so just be aware of this. To use the Travel Locker app, you just download it and then set your country to Indonesia. This is crucial, as if you don't, then you won't get the app dashboard showing you the option to book train tickets. With this app, you can book at least 30 days in advance, and even book them at home well before you fly to Indonesia. Your e-ticket is stored on the app, and it contains your booking code, which you will need at the station on the day of travel. Just remember the golden rule when it comes to buying tickets, and that is book them as early as you possibly can. Trains fill up quickly at times, and there are not many services on each route. So don't be surprised if you can't get what you want or you have to pay to upgrade in class if you leave booking till the last minute. Another thing you need to be aware of is a lot of the bigger cities have more than one train station, with one often being used for executive and another for the economy trains. They're usually close together, but trains don't usually stop at both. So make sure you're at the right station when starting your trip. Cities with two main stations are Jakarta with Gambit and Pasasenan stations, Surabaya with Gubeng and Pasaturi stations, Jogjakarta with Tugu and Lempoyangan stations, Malang with Kota Baru and Kota Lama stations, and Semarang with Tawang and Ponchol stations. At least Bandung keeps things simple with having only just the one main station. On the day you are travelling, try to arrive at the station about an hour before your train departs, but you still have a few things to do and you really don't want any last minute drama. Whichever method you use to buy your ticket, the first thing you need to do is print out your orange boarding pass, so you need to locate the ticket machines. These are easy enough to spot and have instructions in English. Basically, you just type in your booking number that you are given on either the booking app 
or on the paper slip if you have booked at a convenience store or on the ticket you were given if booking at the station and all of your ticket details come up on the screen. All you have to do then is just press print and you're given your boarding pass. You then need to go to the boarding gate and present this boarding pass along with your passport. So make sure when you are booking tickets that you have everyone's names and passport numbers correct because they will check. You then will be on the platforms and you just have to find the right train, which luckily isn't particularly difficult as even the biggest stations don't have that many platforms. Just look for the departure board showing the name of your train and its platform number. You can also look for the destination boards that run several carriages on each train, which give the name of the train service and its destination. Once you have found your train, you then have to find your coach. The coach numbers are not continuous for the whole train, but split up into classes. For example, Executive 1 and Economy 1 can be on the same train and quite far apart. Each coach has a board telling you its coach number, and at each doorway there is a plaque showing you which seat numbers are closest to that entrance, making it easy to find your seat. Also, there are usually members of the train customer service team on the platform who will point you in the right direction if you are struggling. When you get on board, just remember to sit in your allocated seat. All but the most local of train services have onboard catering. Having a restaurant car where you can escape the crowded economy seating for a while, as well as a trolley service which will pass through the train a few times on the journey. The food is not bad. You can get hot food such as nasi goreng, as well as snacks and hot and cold drinks. The most common train journey backpackers take in Java is from Jakarta to Jog Jakarta. So what can you do if this train is full on the day you need to travel? Saying you should have booked earlier is correct, but not particularly helpful. Luckily, there are a few tips I can give that might just get you out of a hole. Firstly, make sure you have checked all possible station combinations for the two cities. Next, see if you can get a train to Kutuajo. This is a city before Jog Jakarta that has a few trains from Jakarta terminate here. If you can get to Kutuajo, there is a local commuter service called the Prambanan Express or Pramex that for about 3,000 rupiah will get you to Jog Jakarta. If these trains are also full, then another option is to first go to see if tickets are available to either Bandung, Chiribon or Semarang, and then see if you can book a Jog Jakarta bound train from these cities. If all of this fails, then your last resort is to pray to the gods of travel and turn up to the station on a day with all your luggage a couple of hours before the train leaves and ask if there has been any ticket cancellations. It's a long shot, but I have got back to Jakarta this way before, so it can be done. Well, that's all I have for you in this episode. When travel back to Java is allowed, I'll make a proper video of how to use the trains in Java, which will make things clearer visually. In episode three, I'll be talking about Indonesia's second city and gateway to Mount Bromo, Surabaya. Another city that is way more interesting than most people realize, and one that was starting to see a bit more in the way of backpackers before COVID shut travel down with many Bali travellers flying into the city to head off to Mount Bromo. If you have any other questions about using the trains, or anything about Java in general, drop it in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer it in another episode. So until then, Sampai Jumpa Lagi!